Lots of people often ask me how a lawyer can defend guilty people like a killer or a rapist. Well, ask any criminal defense lawyer and he will tell you that he does not ask his clients if they committed the crimes they are accused of because it is not his job to determine guilt. That is the province of the jury or the judge. In reality, lawyers prefer not to know if their clients committed the crime because if they knew that their client committed the crime and presented evidence to defend the criminal, the lawyer would be in violation of his ethical duty, which requires him not to knowingly present false evidence to the court. Here are eight reasons why a lawyer would defend someone who might be guilty. Reason number one, constitutional right. The Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendment give a criminal defendant the right to a fair trial. For example, let us take the Sixth Amendment. It says, quote, In all criminal prosecution, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury. Unquote. Consequently, everyone has a constitutionally protected right to a fair trial, regardless of whether they are guilty or innocent. A lawyer can ensure that the client's trial is fair by challenging the prosecutor's tactics and ensuring the judge follows the law. Reason number two, presumption of innocence. In the legal system, defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Even if the lawyer believes that the client is guilty, the lawyer must still respect this presumption and provide a defense that challenges the prosecution's evidence and arguments. Reason number three, prevent abuse by the government. Defense lawyers play an essential role in protecting the rights of individuals against governmental overreach. By defending clients who are accused of crimes, even if they are guilty, defense lawyers help to ensure that the government, represented by the prosecutor, follows proper procedures and adheres to the law. For example, in one of the cases I had when I was a prosecutor, the police report said that the officer stopped a speeding car that was swerving, and when he spoke with the driver, the officer smelled alcohol coming from the driver's breath. This turned out to be a lie. When I reviewed the body and dash cams, I learned that the driver was not speeding or swerving. He was driving fine. Then the cameras showed that when the driver stopped, the police went to the back of his patrol vehicle and got a breathalyzer before the officer ever spoke with the driver. So that told me that the officer already wanted to arrest the driver for driving under the influence even before he had a chance to speak with the driver and smell his breath. I dug a little deeper and I learned that the driver was a felon and the officer knew the driver, recognized the car and wanted to get him again. Now. Even if the driver was a felon, that does not make it right for the officer to lie. The driver paid for his prior crimes and should not be harassed just because he was a felon. So I dismissed the case and reported the officer to internal affairs. But imagine if the case had ended up with an unethical prosecutor or prosecutor who did not review the evidence thoroughly enough to become aware of the officer's lies. Who would have stopped this governmental overreach? Defense lawyers, of course. So that is what I mean by defense lawyers are important to prevent government abuse. Reason number four, professional obligation. A lawyer has a duty to provide a strong and effective defense to their clients, regardless of guilt. The rules of professional conduct require lawyers to defend their clients zealously, diligently, and competently, irrespective of their personal feelings or beliefs about their client's guilt. However, there are exceptions. One that I can think of now is, let us say that a lawyer's daughter was raped some years ago. Now, a court has appointed the lawyer to represent another rapist. The lawyer can decline to represent the rapist. If the lawyer had such intense personal feelings that may impair his ability to represent the rapist effectively. Reason number five, avoiding selective representation. A lawyer who refuses to defend a guilty client 
could be accused of selective representation or discriminating against certain clients. It is generally considered the ethical thing to do for a lawyer to provide legal representation to all clients who seek their services. Reason number six, mitigating circumstances. Even if a client is guilty, their lawyer may argue for mitigating circumstances that could reduce their client's culpability or sentence. This could include factors such as mental illness, upbringing, or other circumstances. For example, before sentencing a teen for arson, the judge would consider the teen's upbringing, past criminal behavior, or mental illness. Those mitigating circumstances may not excuse the teen's behavior, but can help to explain his actions and reduce his sentence. Reason number seven, seeking justice. In some cases, lawyers may defend a guilty client because they believe the prosecution's case is weak or flawed, or the client has been unfairly targeted or prosecuted. In these situations, the lawyer may see their defense as a way of seeking justice and protecting their client's right. Reason number eight, legal precedent. The outcome of a particular case can set a legal precedent that could affect future cases and the rights of future defendants. A lawyer defending a guilty client may seek to establish a legal precedent that could benefit other defendants in similar situations. Those were the reasons why lawyers represent guilty people. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.